If you like the content that we're pushing out, please like, share, and of course subscribe. And let us know in the comments what you think about our videos. Like, why would you watch it and not tell us what's going on? And I hope to see you later on. Peace out. Welcome to another Alternative Factuals video, you guys. And remember, if you like our content, please like, share, and of course subscribe and leave a comment down below. And let us know what you think. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, Roxxon Oil Corporation is one of the world's largest conglomerate inside of Marvel Comics, along with Stark Industries and a couple other places, but I'm not going to get too deep into that because then I'll kind of go into a tangent. Now, in the 1940s, it had ties to the Council of Nine, and I'm going to explain a little bit what the Council of Nine was, just a little bit so you can have an idea of how deep Roxxon Oil Corporation runs. But the Council of Nine was one of the founders of Roxxon, Hugh Jones. And he had a lot of integrations with the Council of Nine simply because it was also known as the Council, a group of powerful businessmen and politicians who sought to gain massive amounts of power, whether it be wealth or just simple control over the whole world. So they usually tend to go for things that are giving them the ability to manipulate other people, whether it be financially, emotionally, mentally, which includes superpowers, which includes weapons, which includes politics and all that stuff in the economy. And they were very heavily influenced within the United States over the course of their creation to the present time in Marvel Comics. Now, for the most part, Rockstar's employees have been motivated by the combination of corporate greed and world domination, meaning absolutely nothing is off the table when it comes to them trying to achieve their ultimate goal, and that is to be the most powerful physically, as well as the most powerful politics-wise, economically as well. But they often are motivated by this greed for world domination, and they've often been referenced to be as greedy as they are, especially in the TV show, in the show Agent Carter, season one. They have been motivated by the path of pursuing their own interests much like the rest of the MCU antagonists, so they feel like for some reason they're entitled to this power and to this uh, economic gain and all these abilities and stuff like that. They feel like they deserve it and no one else should have that ability or those powers or the kind of influence within the world. Now, this is a little spoiler for the TV show just so you can kind of have an idea of what possibly can come. I really do see this happening in the series, so this is probably a pretty accurate spoiler, but Cloak and Dagger Volume 2, Number 5, O'Reilly was actually killed while investigating the warehouse that gave Cloak and Dagger their powers. Now remember, in Marvel Comics, Cloak and Dagger are still considered mutants simply because the drugs that were inject injected in them at the warehouse that was actually run by Roxxon Oil Corporation triggered their mutant genes which gave both Tandy and Ty access to the light force and the dark force so keep that in mind now it'd be really cool if later on that she actually ended up getting killed or whatever like that and then they actually resurrected her by the gas that was emitted by the warehouse because eventually she was reborn as a vigilante called mayhem uh, she didn't really have too much involvement in comics overall but just a nice little character development for her as well as for Tandy and Ty because then she will be come into the picture and then help their characters develop along the way and we can get to know them better based on the situation that's presented with a new vigilante in town because we already know automatically that Tandy and Ty are going to take the vigilante standpoint because that is their purpose in Cloak and Dagger comics. They sought out to seek justice for the people who abused them, the people who hurt them, the people who wronged them are very much responsible for a lot of their problems in their life. So they went out and they wanted to make sure that did not happen to anybody else. Now, remember that if they keep creating superpower and I'm referring to Roxxon Corporation, um, they actually can introduce a lot of other people and characters from Marvel Comics. Um, there's one online theory that they can possibly introduce She-Hulk or villains like Kaboom or the silencer or Kamala Khan. Kamala Khan is actually an inhuman, so I would see them more or less getting an interaction with the Magia, a subdivision that, well, that what was a subdivision in Marvel Comics of Roxxon Oil Corporation because the Magia was actually run by a family that actually turned out to be in humans in the first place or they had the inhuman gene which thus when they went through terra genesis they transformed so i mean yes it's possible they can show up in the show but i don't really see that happening in response to the roxon oil corporation giving them abilities but let me know what you guys think about these concepts and let me know what you're kind of looking forward to or expecting from the series and remember if you're new to the channel please be sure to like share and of course subscribe and leave a comment down below and let us know what you think and i hope to see you in the next one peace out zaddy